right, so I'm scraping this thing down and it looks like to me this half of the headliner has been worked on because I can see a spray glue line running right out across here. If you ever see something with a, what looks like a little ropey effect to it like this going across here, that's typically spray glue. My opinion of spray glue is this. I don't like it. <laughs> Mostly because the spray glue that you get today typically doesn't seem to hold up as well as it did years ago. And I know a lot of us old guys say things like that. Oh, 40 years ago you could get spray glue that was the best stuff this side of the planet. It's true, I hate to say it, but glue was better back then. It lasted longer and worked better. For this application, I'm going to use something that I'm gonna be talking about in just a second, but for right now, I'm gonna finish cleaning this sucker off a little bit more just to make sure that my adhesion is gonna be really tight. I'm gonna put down the glue I'm using, and no, it's not spray glue. All right, now well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look my headliner over, see what I have. Now I'm gonna say that I did not pull this headliner out of uh, Pat's F-250. He had already pulled it out by the time I got to it. And so I cannot show you removal or installation procedures on that. But what I will tell you is that look at your headliner when you pull it out. Some cars like Camaros and cars like that that have the molded headliners in them with the, uh, the wonderful you know, velour or whatever on the top of them. They're just one big round molded thing. They don't have any kind of uh, pie cuts in them. This one from Ford has pie cuts in the corner. And what you'll want to do if you have pie cuts is you'll want to tape the low side. Whatever side is sitting lowest, I work to that side. Then I pull everything up together and I tape it down. It should then pretty much keep that form. Now the reason I'm using the metal duct tape is because that stuff will stick to anything. It'll stick in dirt sometimes. I've used it doing duct work in attics and I mean you're not working in a clean area but there's enough sticky to it that it'll hold well enough that you can get your headliner set inside of this area. All right, so a lot of guys will tell you, hey man, I can go buy a complete headliner for my whatever it's called and it'll be great. And yes, you can. You can buy a complete headliner, but the thing is, is you can do this actually pretty inexpensively on your own. If you don't feel comfortable with this sort of activity, then yeah, go ahead and get the full-on headliner. I mean, this one is available from the guys at National Parts Depot. Um, Pat wanted to try this, and somehow I roped myself into doing it for him, because he was gonna do it, and I said, nah, I'll take care of it. Trust me, he's a good friend. The guy does enough for the family that I probably should do like three or four of these for him. In any case, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start bridging this thing up and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second so that the headliner's sitting up as it should. Blankets, I need blankets. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my bridging for this. And what I mean by bridging is some headliners, it's a good idea to have something holding up the outside edges where it would normally be folded. Uh, and the reason for that is you want this to sink in just a little bit because most headliners are set up with a little bit of a, a curve to them. So that right there, I have a piece of carpet on the other side and I have that towel on this side. That gives me my bridge that I'm looking for to make this thing sag just a hair in the middle so that I can go ahead and start going in and laying in about 400 pounds of glue. Speaking of glue, I said I was gonna talk about this and now this is the point. I use contact cement when I'm doing this kind of stuff, and the reason I use contact cement is, quite frankly, it works. Um, I've had problems with spray glue with the headliners falling out because of heat, especially down here in the south. People are going to say there's a lot of stink from contact glue. Yes, contact glue does stink, but I will also say this about contact glue, after a little while it doesn't stink anymore. Uh, and it works very, very well in these kind of applications. I've never had a headliner issue with contact glue. I, I say that now and, you know, this one will like fall out on Pat's head. But normally I don't have a problem with contact glue not sticking. Even when I have things with little bits of particulate that are still left on this headliner, it'll come up on the roller or it'll come out of here or it'll stick down and you won't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I do to lay down contact cement. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this stuff out. You're gonna see that I pick up debris, not worried about it. This stuff has a set time of about two hours in good weather. What I mean by good weather is anything above 65 degrees, 
Uh, you want to be in the mid 70s or higher if you do this, which we are today. You want to be in a well ventilated area, which we are today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a thin coat of this down. You want to have a little bit of a gloss to it when you lay it. Uh, with a roller, sometimes it's kind of hard to see the gloss, but um, you'll just be doing this for a minute here. It's going to be pretty boring to watch, so I'm just going to do this off camera and finish this up. But you want to get a good coat of everywhere, especially down in these creases along here. Those creases are pretty important for a Ford headliner to look correct. And also, be sure that you're in a well-ventilated area because the great caramel of death, which is contact cement, will get you high and hurt you. Uh, you will end up with a bad headache or worse. So please be sure you're in a well-ventilated area. We're in a well-ventilated area, and honestly, this stuff reeks. It's very loud and nasally. <laughs> so be advised. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I've got my um, underside of the headliner laid out face down so I kind of have an idea of where we're going to lay. I want it a little bit broad. I want some on the, on the back, on the front, and on the sides still glued up because this is going to actually fall into this uh, cup, if you will, of the headliner board material. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue up the headliner itself, the material itself, and then uh, I'll be ready to go ahead and start laying this thing in. That is probably the scariest and most tedious part of this is actually laying the headliner in. I'm going to show you a tip on how to do that after I glue this stuff up and let it sit for about 20 minutes. And now what I'm going to do now is I've got a uh, sheet underneath this section of the glued uh, headliner and then I've got this all ready to glue. I've got this box that I am using. This is a caliper box that I have here. I have a special tool that I use for doing this kind of stuff that I can't find right now because we're still in the midst of trying to get everything from over at our old location to our new location. So there you go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and go up underneath here and I'm going to set this and try to go as much in a line as I possibly can and burnish it down. Um, you don't want to get this stuff stuck to each other. That's bad juju. Looks like I'm going to have a hard time doing what I want to do. The table. What I'm trying not to get is folds in the line. right here. That is the one danger with using contact cement on these kind of things. Um, you can get a little bit of what I like to call mush right here and it may or may not come out with it sitting for a little bit. Now what I'll do is I'll go in since that side is mostly set. Some of this looks like it would probably be able to be brought out with a steamer I think some of what I'm seeing here is not my stuff. It's actually from when the stuff was sitting stacked uh, out there in the world waiting to be bought because there's some fold lines in here that I'm seeing that aren't indicative of the problems that I might would be creating, so to speak. I'm going to roll this one back, pull my sheet out. Luckily, we didn't wreck the Mrs. Sheets yet. With the other side laid, this one is a little less critical for position because your position is already set. Now all I'm doing is because I like that line that Ford had in these headliners, I'm just using the edge of this to drop that in there a little bit better. And I wonder if, with a little bit of steaming, 
which I don't have my steamer here, but with a little bit of steaming, we might be able to make this thing lay out better. Some of these just feel like they probably will come out if I steam this headliner some. You can use an iron to do some of your steaming as well. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have an expensive steamer to make that work. Uh, and that's probably what I'll do on this is I'll try to go in and steam it with a regular iron steamer to see what we get with it. Okay, this other side and then we're basically ready to go to cut the rest of this apart from it. All right, now what I'm doing is I've got a very sharp razor blade here that I'm going to cut the headliner. You'll note too that I am cutting the headliner material out a little bit from the board itself. I want a little bit of slevage there just in case. You just don't know what you're going to run into when you're putting this back in, especially since I didn't take it out. If the owner wants to go in and remove the slevage because it's in the way or whatever, that's going to be up to Pat. I'm just going to put slevage in because I like the insurance. It's going to go all the way around the nose of this thing. I'm going to cut way out on this since that corner is basically wrecked. It's a lot easier to go this way than it is to go the other way. I'll cut this off of here so it's not going to get tangled up and caught on anything else. And I'm going to spin the headliner around to go and do a little bit more work. Hopefully I don't knock a camera over in the process of doing all this doodly do. You might want to make sure you have enough of these razor blades too to be able to change them out every little bit because they do get dulled up whenever you're working on these kind of surfaces. And I also like to have a couple of big tables like this to work on when I'm doing these big broad headliners because it just makes things a lot easier. This is why I have a cat. My cat just came up on the walkway here with another rat. She's killed three in the last two days. And I guess she wants me to know she's earning her keep. The cat food I'm feeding her is doing her pretty well, or maybe it's just not enough. In any case, there she is. If you animal lovers get a little squeamish at this, I'm sorry. Don't look and I'll tell you when to start looking again. All right, so I'm gonna finish cutting this thing out and then we're gonna show you one more thing on this part of it, on the cutting away of the headliner. All right, now I'm gonna go in and cut the uh, opening for the dome light. I'm gonna exit. I am not going to go in and cut the perimeter because again, I am not sure on Pat's headliner how this is gonna work and I'd rather have a little bit of extra slevage and need to go in and cut that out in the truck rather than having to do this and having to redo the headliner. So that way, if I can, I'll go in with some uh, weather strip adhesive, take and tack these back. Well, there you go. I know that uh, no cam this week, Cam. Uh, we're actually shooting this during the week. Uh, Andrew is behind camera three. Yeah, he's behind camera three shooting this stuff from over here. So it's just he and I, but we're gonna have a few of these running along. There's just stupid little things that I wanna shoot that we don't wanna spend a lot of time on on a Saturday, but we can shoot on a Monday or Tuesday when uh, Andrew's working. Cause as I said, I need to keep him busy cause I am paying him. So there you go. So do me a favor folks and go out and check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. You also get uh, all of our content that we do specifically for our patrons. Relax if you are watching this on Auto Restomod or Manic Mechanic. Uh, we still do this as a normal and there's gonna be probably more things coming as Andrew gets more comfortable editing. We're gonna have him do more and more things. So we'll have more and more content that we're gonna be bringing you. Some shorter, smaller stuff, along with our standard Manic Mechanic and Auto Restomod things, as well as the videos that we do to uh, say thank you to our patrons that come in and help us out. Uh, also, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. We are trying to make sure that you get the content that you need to see. 
YouTube is messing with the algorithm some and that's causing us to not show up as much as we would like for us to. So if you subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notification, you'll know every time we put a video up and that'll help you be able to fix up your classic car. Finally and all folks, do me a favor, be kind to each other, love on each other, have a great week and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. <sighs> Poor little mouse. Kitty is just playing with her food, but at least she's doing her job.